Yes, indeed. So uh, I see okay. the quorum being present. I call this meeting of the uh, Policy Committee of the uh, CCSD uh, to order. I see um, a fly fan going and a top of somebody's head. That's just all you need to see. <laughs> well, so uh, make sure everybody's got their technology work in here. Uh, Claudia, are you almost? Are yeah, you I'm sending you. I'm sending uh, this whatever notes I have for this home policy to uh, to you right now. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's what it is. I'm sorry. I was up till four last night. I work on today. Is it's, uh, it's, not worry. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm. You know. No punishments. No punishments. So I, when we get to the appropriate moment, then if you emailed it, I can go ahead and share it off of my screen. Is it BX Treme? Is that Ted Key? Is that you? BX? It is, man. It's my old skiing handle. Okay. And uh, who else do I need? And I need John uh, Nixon. Okay. Hang on. John, I only got one for him. Leslie. Leslie's with me. Okay. Well, I'll send it to her thing. I sent one to you. Who else do I need? Oh, and Don. Yeah, send it okay. to me, then I'll One, two, three, four, five. Oh, so that's everybody. Okay, so I just want to put homeless notes. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is what it is. Uh, okay. Well, let's just charge through here. Um, yeah. So first, uh, Chairman's report. Actually, the, the substance of that will actually come forth as we come down further in the agenda. Um, well, let's see. Uh, in regards to the... Uh, filling of vacancies. I'll talk about that when we get down to that item. Uh, the board did have some feedback for us on that. Um, on the other part, which isn't on the uh, regular business today, was uh, we did, I did present the uh, changes to our, to the code 080400 uh, regarding the contiguous um, street frontage. And I think you probably all saw, I think I sent the, uh, my uh, little a very brief report to all of you as to the situation, which basically, which basically was to in it to make a very short thing of it is that in the minds of the board uh, members, the situation was a little more complicated uh, than we had foreseen. Uh, so that so the the end result was that uh, the item has been tabled. It'll take three votes to pass it. It'll take three votes to get it back on the agenda. So I, th I think our approach to this uh, in our copious free time will be at a later date to, to um, I'll do a little initial research and then bring it back to you uh, just to address some of the concerns that the board did raise so that we can at least say that we did our homework. Uh, but. It, it, it can't, uh, but I won't bring it, uh, there's no point in even bring it back to the board if I don't have three votes to get it, uh, you know, to get it on an agenda. So the best we can do is get our ducks in order and then wait for the appropriate moment. Yeah, Claudia. Is there just like one or two things that you might just mention quickly as to their objections? Uh, yeah, well, it, it go, Brad, as I said, it, uh, what looked like a simple matter, I think part of the issue is uh, our assumption or determination as to what the intent of that section of code was, where we, we were basically saying, this looks like a typo, a, 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 an omission. We weren't really in our own minds, and I'm speaking for all of you here, so forgive me if I'm not exactly accurate, but in our own minds, we were simply, we had, we had read the code and determined that it was probably the intention of the people that wrote it to that street to street, 25 foot lots would not be included as uh, should not be receiver lots in a transfer of a uh, position or a meter. Uh, but that, there is the other position that it, it in fact was the intention to allow street to street 25 foot lots to be. And, and I think what the board, some of the board members were saying is that right. we, we were, uh, we, we're basically going beyond the county code and that we needed to be, this was their position. Oh, I'm just talking, you know, and I don't know if it's true or not because you have to look at the county code to make sure. Uh, but there was some feeling that what we were actually doing was going beyond the uh, level of the county code and, and, and making it possible that some 
lots which could have been developed in the town would therefore not be developable. And they felt that was overreaching on our on our part, basically. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm make a uh, comment in a minute. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, as I said, um, it was an interesting discussion, and if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, I, I it might make it might piss you off a little bit, but I recommend that you do listen <laughs> to it <laughs> because it, it does raise some rather interesting issues, including. Uh, the issue as to how stuff gets on our plate to start with. Um, in fact, the initial reaction from our, my esteemed fellow board members was, why on earth are you dealing with this? How did you ever get this? How, how did this come before you? <laughs> I know. I said, well, you know, certain letters were written, et cetera, et cetera. Four years ago, Don. I know. So Four I, years ago. What I need to do. So my plan on this one is to go back, go chapter and verse, find out when it was sent to the policy committee, when Ted wrote his original letters. Uh, I, I need to document the whole thing, you know, and then still got them. <laughs> I know. And then, and then either I or one, one of you, should you <laughs> choose to volunteer, will mm -hmm. need to review the county code yeah. and the local coastal uh, plan. Yeah. to determine whether we made a wrong assumption and that it really was the intention of the coders, the, the legislators, just a second, I'll get to you. Uh, I, see, I see two hands. Um, what, in other words, it is possible that our interpretation of their intention and their actual intention were in yeah. fact different. So anyway, that's, I, uh, not to worry, uh, we did what we needed to do and, and it, it, it just revealed some rather interesting. So anyway, I do recommend though, if you need a little entertainment and if you might get a little pissed, but still just it might be useful in terms of thinking how we relate to the board stuff. Uh, I saw several hands. Um, Leslie. Uh, yeah, Leslie and then Ted. May I join the research team on this one? I already <laughs> You certainly may. Uh, so Leslie, later on offline, I'll contact you on that. Okay, thank you. So research uh, TDC, T, what is it? Transfer of device. It's not really TDC, it's transfer of physicians. No, it's, yeah, it's not, yeah, it has nothing to do with TDC. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I misspoke oh, on how that. How that ever got into the argument? That was me, uh, <laughs> just me floating off, sorry. Well, uh, no, TDC and receiver parcel, those are terms that are in, or you, that is in TDCs too, though, receiver parcels. So okay. in, yeah, transfer meter and TDC has both receiver parcel as a definition. So you were actually correct. I, I got to watch the video as well. Okay, good. Okay, Leslie. Well, you and I will talk, say where we want to go. Uh, let's see, uh, Ted and then uh, Claudia. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say. I got this thing started because of this monster over here on Nottingham. You can come take a look at it yourself. Let me just address the business of fire. When I had the fire chief over here, he was finaling my house. I showed it to him. He says, that's nuts. I don't wanna, I don't wanna send my firefighters into those kind of alleyways. I don't want any more of these. He says, I was asked to do a fire plan for it, so I did it, but honestly, I don't like these things. Now, as far as that lot's concerned, it was 35 feet on one side. Mm. The lots, <clears throat> If you go to, and I know Leslie will go right to county. I mean, she, she, she will go to this like magnet. Um, and and all, I, all I can say is the issue here is how people are planning to get beyond that ordinance. That ordinance is not, has nothing to do with county. That ordinance is purely CSD. And, and I, I, I don't know how, you know, county got into that at all because it's a CSD ordinance. And yeah. all they're trying to do here is to prevent overloading the sewer system. And it makes perfect sense. I don't think that, I think, I think that people are overthinking this thing. And honestly, Don, I know you said at one time that you took a look and there were a whole batch of these circumstances that exist in town. Well, now this is over for me. It's all over, but, but this business, yeah. Uh, and, and I do, uh, you know, I, I, I am going to, yes, we need to get our ducks in a row. We need to put this back on here. But I, 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 I am just absolutely astonished that after four years that no one on this board, well, except for you, Don, 
you know, looked at this thing and I sent letters to all of them. <laughs> so, I, they, you know, I, I, you know, when Tina made her comment, I was like, yeah, Tina, yeah, yeah, you know, you got to come prepared for, to discuss, a, to discuss the project. And after four years, if you're not prepared to discuss this project, what the heck? Yeah. Now, um, I, you know, again, I, what I'm trying to do here is help the district. I'm trying to help them so they don't over, I don't care anymore about who's built what. It's all over for me over here. <laughs> you know, this is all about the district now. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I think so. But I will, I will say this. I will say this when we discuss the issue that, that uh, Claudia and I are working on. This one comes to front and center because I sent letters and I got nothing. Nothing. And again, that's sort of, yeah, where are we going on that? Let's see. I think uh, uh, Claudia, yeah. Um, I do remember that when that code was enacted in the CZLUO, the intention was to not ever build on 25 foot wide lots, mm -hmm. nothing under 50 feet. So 35 feet is under 50 feet. It should have never been built upon. That is the code. That is the intention because we don't want to have lots and lots of houses built on 25 foot lots on Park Hill with three foot side setbacks. Now on Lodge Hill, the side setbacks are wider, but not on not on Park Hill. It make how the fire department approved this. I have no idea. You know, Ted said that they did, but they didn't want to. Well, no, they didn't have to. If they would have stopped it, it would have been dead in the water because the next house that gets built, you know, there's going to be six feet in between. The roofs will be practically touching each other. It is very very dangerous. And I live on Park Hill, so I I, I appreciate that. But anyway, the intent was no building on 25 foot lots. Okay. Oh, thank you, Claudia. That was sort of my th my thinking on that. At any rate, uh, <laughs> what I can see. Moving on. That, moving on. <clears throat> hold on, Leslie. I see your hand. Just a second. Uh, yeah. Well, Leslie, go ahead. I see you had a little more to say. Yeah, it's square footage now, Claudia. It goes by square footage of the entire lot. It, if that's how they got away with it, so that's the key. The key is um, it's uh, the three five. I, I forgot what the number was, Don. It was three five five zero. Yeah. So if, yeah. if you had. A, a sliver on the street front, 10 feet, and you want all the way back to 90 feet at 200 feet, you can build on it. See, that's the problem now. It's square footage, not street frontage any longer with County of San Luis. So that's Second, the, they changed the CZLUO? They haven't changed. It's always been square footage. It's they, they go by discretionary. Either it's frontage or square footage. That's why they got around it. That's how Nottingham got in. Interesting. The reason I know this is because code enforcement was there yesterday, Ted. Oh, cool. <laughs> On site, yeah, they're getting busted because they built a concrete plinth into the neighbor's setback for the front porch. Oh, 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 oh. oh man. Anyway, yeah. okay, we're having too good a time here. Hold on. And happy today. I just wanted to give them a, 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 a little giggle. So there you go. That's very good. So one, one, one quick little thing. Um, I did go by there and tell them that they, uh, the orange uh, uh, fencing that they had laying on the ground uh, was supposed to be wrapped around the tree that you know on the on the lot next door to protect it because that's county code, and the 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 uh, uh, I don't know if he was the contractor or what, but he he said no, we'll never do that, and it's not on my property. I says, but you've got your truck and all your equipment on that property, so you need to protect the tree. Yeah, it's never going to happen. And I said, well, this is why we didn't want this project. You know, we don't want these projects in the future. Yo, oh yeah, good luck, good luck. <laughs> okay. So, that's the kind of guy we're dealing with. So yeah, this is something like we can have, uh, I, I'm being facetious, a little more fun with, but uh, so what we'll do, uh, we need, I guess the issue here is if it's something that we really care about uh, instituting a change, it's gonna take a little more uh, ammunition to, to bring it forth. So I'll, uh, Leslie and I will work a little bit on that and we may have some offline discussions uh, with any other interested parties. Uh, but, I'll yeah. send you all my letters. Well, yeah, with you, I just need a history, Ted, of, of oh, you'll get it. letters, uh, because that, as you said, it actually uh, is germane in more than one uh, issue here. Uh, moving right along, though, I didn't really want to take too much time with that. I, I, again, if you hadn't, uh, I, let me make one comment just briefly on the fire issue, uh, because I did, I directly asked uh, uh, Chief Hollingshead about that, uh, knowing that the Nottingham situation was, uh, you know, there were some questions. 
Uh, and, and the takeaway that I got from that is even though he doesn't like like the three foot setback on some of these areas, he said this is really crazy and ridiculous, but he doesn't feel that he has any power. Uh, in, in other words, as long as the houses are being built to code, even if he can't get the fire engine through, he doesn't feel uh, apparently that he can just, uh, in fact, I don't even know if he has the legal ability to re to disallow development, but he didn't seem to feel that he did, oh. or he was unwilling to take that step. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Again, uh, if you hadn't listened to his response to my question, I do hi highly recommend that. Again, it's just very good to kind of see how everything is playing out. It's, it's very good. Not, not that I'm particularly fond of my own voice and all that. Um, at any rate, uh, moving right along. So that's, that's the substance of my report. Uh, let's see. So on the um, ad hoc committee reports, uh, rather than specify as I've done in the past, uh, let me just uh, uh, put out a blanket question. Do we have any reports from any of uh, anybody who's not on the regular business section? If it's regular business, we'll take care of it down below, which is uh, mission statement, grant policy, vacancy of board of directors, and street lighting. So if you have, uh, we have like um, homeless, the homeless one, maybe we don't have, so that would be one we could use a report, if there is a report. Uh, well, anyway, I see, uh, yeah, Ted, you, you, you prefer starters. Hi, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Claudia and Don and I have been working on this business uh, the letter writing business, which is perfectly relevant today, but I won't go there. Uh, what we did do is we sent out a, a whole variety of questions that were dealing with the procedures and trying to determine what, you know, what uh, happens to letters or emails when they, when they hit the door. Well, okay. Uh, now I submitted a, a, a right up to uh, to Don and Claudia. Let me just let me just read it. It's just probably just as quick. Okay, so in terms of the procedures, all right, letters which seem to have a very small monthly volume, one letter a month, reach the administration office and are forwarded onto the district clerk. If five letters are received, they're scanned to email and forwarded to the board and general manager. Letters are included in the board members meeting package. The board can be notified this way, but cannot do a reply all to avoid Brown Act issues. Same for emails copied to all members. Email to individual board members requires no action by staff as they would not see them unless the sender requests forward to all members. Again, board members may not do a reply all. All email letters to the board comment address, the board comment address, are read during public comment and a confirmation is sent to the sender. What I'm seeing here, and this is, this is where we get to, what I'm seeing here is that the established staff process is fine. The areas I see problematic are what the board members' actions are. The individual board members can choose to respond or not, and that response could, uh, time could vary widely depending on their perception of the nature of the issue. I think Amanda was right to request committee consideration on this matter, but the real issue, as I see it, is that the board needs to discuss this matter and establish a process to avoid no response scenarios. For us to establish a policy without the board getting together and creating a process or at least some basic parameters to ensure proper and timely responses, it's going to be problematic and not likely going to get anywhere without getting very contentious. So that's kind of, that's kind of, I don't, you know, at, at first I, we was thinking, I was looking at this thing, you know, policy, procedure, policy, procedure. What, you know, what I, what I think I perceive here is that the, 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 the procedure that's going on with the staff right now is it, it, okay. I think what really boils down to is that the board members need to, need to sit down and go, what happens, you know, in, in, in cases like this? And how, how do we want to set up some type of a procedure to, to, uh, to, to deal with it? And, and then if we have that, then I, you know, perhaps we can put together a policy, but without that import, input really from the board, I just think we're, we're, I think we're just, you know, grabbing at rainbows here. And uh, that's kind of where I think this goes. So, uh, you know, if, if everybody thinks we ought to write some, something up, you know, like this to the board 
and, and submit it to them and they can get back to us, then maybe that's what we should do. We could table this thing until, you know, until further. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ted. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. No problem. Thank you. A very good report. Uh, let me see. Claudia, I think you were on that subcommittee. Did you have anything to add? Well, it's very frustrating because the biggest issue that, that I encountered and Ted just mentioned is that uh, people do not get their letters answered and there's no, there's no accountability for that. No receipt, you know, thank you very much. I received your letter. We will take it under consideration is all they have to say, but there's no way to force board members to do that. If they get a letter, they don't like it. They just, I don't know, whatever they do with it. Okay. Um, so you know, I think we maybe we could encourage people that want to address uh, a particular board member to also copy it to uh, maybe the general manager or to uh, another board member or somebody else. So there's somebody who's going to see this letter besides the person that it gets addressed to. Uh, you know, send it to them, but copy other, you know, one other person so you don't have a Brown Act issue. So how many people can you copy? Two people? Uh, people? Because of the size. If on this committee you can copy, you can be free because three. Yeah, um, three is not a quorum. But if it's the board, it can only be two. Two. Okay. So you so encourage people to send a letter to the individual that they want to ask the question, but copy it to somebody else so that there's some accountability. And I would you know maybe send it to Haley's because she's a good you know friendly not you know good resource for that or somebody because then there is. There's somebody that you, that you can write to Haley and say, I sent this letter to such and such person. You have the letter. What I never got an answer. Something to that effect. So, okay, yeah. Thank you, Claudia. And uh, Ted? Yeah, just one last thing. Again, you know, what that boils down to is for the members of the board to sit down together and say, you know, how do we want to do this? And, and, and not to try and second guess the, you know, the, the, the procedures. Uh, un until we have something from from the board to to uh, to work from. Uh, other than that, I think, like I say, we're chasing rainbows. So, okay. So, but I uh, any anyone else uh, questions or comments on this? Question. Uh, yeah, yeah, Leslie. Um, I mean, prior to my time on the uh, policy committee, um, you did uh, 1040 correspondence to the board, though you started there, correct? Correct. So this 1040-1 is what we're working on. Because I have a 1042, which is the electronic correspondence here. So is this 1040-1 or 1040-2? What's the number on it? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, the electronic one is, uh, that may be a misnumbering. The, 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 there's two, there were two aspects. It came, to the, it came to the policy committee as a general question regarding correspondence to the board. <laughs> uh, what we... What we did is you, you already, uh, the committee already did something regarding correspondence to the board. There's a small little, that's, that's the point one policy. But, but that still left the question, and, and which was really the, the question that I had originally, which is part of why we're, hold on a minute while I kill that, this. Uh, uh, there. It claims to be scam. So. Um, Oh, suddenly got derailed. Oh yeah, the reason that is that well, we we had the policy coming in, but is the whole question of is there some kind of policy about responding to the correspondence, and that's where we got into this. And well, it references in the code written responses though. In the forty ten forty dash one, it says written responses and reply there to shall be distributed to each member of the board. So there actually is a statement in the actual code section referring to responses, correspondent responses. I'll have to look at that then to be sure that we're, you, know, you remember this is just a report, but uh, I think the issue is, regardless of what we have there, is that what I've heard, uh, uh, unless I hear something more different from the committee, is uh, I, what I'm hearing, I think, is that the ad hoc committee uh, really needs to hear from the board as to what they, you know, they can do this. The board could say, you know, express a bunch of opinions and then say, okay, policy committee, here is our thinking, come up with a policy. Right. So, and, and what I hear Ted saying is that I think you guys may feel that you're working in a vacuum. Uh, in other words, instead of what you really want to hear is what the board wants. Yeah. 
and then maybe you can come up with something. Is that, am I stating that correctly? No, I, I get. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 th I think you I think you're stating it absolutely correctly. Well, yeah, but Claudia disagrees with you, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, unfortunately, I think if you ask the board what they want to do, they want to keep it just as it as it is. And I mean, I, I shouldn't second guess them. But, you know, when we bring things before them, you know, the best evidence of future behavior is past behavior. So if we're going to ask them to be more responsible or responsive to people that that send in inquiries, um, they're probably going to say it's just fine, you know, don't mess with it. So I'm not sure, Ted, maybe he can explain what he thinks the board is going to might tell us they want us to do, but we've been tasked with writing this policy. And I think that we need to come up with a solution or, may, or more than one solution. Would you, like, would you like to do it this way or this way, you know, kind of thing, rather than you know, leaving it open. I, you know, we're, we're tasked to write a policy, not to ask them what they think, you know. <laughs> okay. All right, well, that's, that's good. Let me, let me leave it for now on that. And then now that I've had the input from both of you, we'll uh, talk. Kind of come back to it. We'll all talk. Because this is just a report. I want to get us down to the business here. Um, <clears throat> this, is, this is definitely a problem, though. And, uh, and so we, I, we will work further on this. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll what I'll do is converse with uh, Ted and Claudia a little bit, and then possibly even query some of the rest of you. And then I may go and interview some of my fellow board members myself or something, try to see how, how we can approach this in a way that will end up with a good result for everybody. Because yeah. we don't want to be bringing stuff to the board that just gets ignored or otherwise uh, says, what on earth are you guys talking about this for? <laughs> we really don't want to if we don't have to. Yeah, yeah, Claudia. You know, I mean, I, I don't think it's a problem with saying, you know, a correspondence to an individual board member must be responded to within 24 hours or, or you know, or 48 hours. Uh, and uh, an acknowledgement must be made as soon as possible. You know, I mean, even before that, and you say, I got your note, I'll respond tomorrow, you know, something like that. But I don't think there's anything wrong with, with, with telling them that they need to respond. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> I don't think you need to tell you them that. Respond. And then by Amanda. Hey, huh? Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let, that's okay. Let's, let's just, I think this is really a very, this could be an extremely interesting. Actually, the three of us, uh, over the next month or two, we can Zoom together and kind of talk about this a little, just between the three of us, maybe. Yes. And uh, that might, we might actually come up with something. Yeah. Yeah, and if you if you uh, will would be willing to talk to uh, you know your board members individually um, and get some feedback from them, then we can come to this table and we can say, okay, they're willing to you know the majority is willing to do such and such, and we'll present that something. Yeah. Like that. Okay, yeah, I think I can do that. Yeah, without okay. violating the Brown Act, as long as I don't tell the individuals what each other thinks. I, in other words, I can go and uh, I can lobby each individual board member. I just can't say what. You know what what the other one has said i would start okay. yeah I, are we good on this then pretty much any uh, any just questions at this point uh okay so that was the uh, correspondence to the board uh how about the homeless uh, uh people experiencing homelessness i know that you guys have been working on this but i'm not sure you're ready uh other I, I you read you a, a few things that i added um okay because you you already have i know i really doubt the ball but i i if I told you all the stuff I've been doing the last two weeks, we would use up all of our time. So oh, I, really not, don't, don't, I will dispense with that. No, okay. There's no dropping um, the ball here. Yeah, it's really yeah. okay. Uh, well, thank you. I do appreciate that. I, you know, I, I, I like to really fulfill my, my obligations, and this time I just couldn't do it. Um, but I did, I did spend some hours working on this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to look at was the Santa, Ro uh, Santa Clara uh, document because uh, Leslie had, had uh, mentioned that. And so I went through that document, and besides the, I, I sent you originally last month, I guess, a, a list of about 11 things, and that would be an order that I thought we should use. Uh, but this is before we were going to use the existing policy. Okay, so so what I what the, the order I wrote, and these things need to be incorporated into the existing policy. 
okay. and pros uh, that uh, Leslie mentioned, and, and she and I talked about this, that we decided that since pros doesn't want to cooperate, we're going to take all the stuff about what pros should do. Although I did leave in one thing, and I'll tell you what it is. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'll, let you, I'll just read it to you. So I have, I have a few, just a few things, and, and I will just read them to you. I just sent it to you, so you have, have no time to look at this. But okay. So uh, build partnerships to host emergency shelter, safe places to park and access services, and sanction encampments sanction encampments that are not swept, swept and, and include hygiene and supportive services. In other words, if we could move the, the camps to, I mean, these camps to someplace else, to not to just kick them out, but, but have someplace in Cambria or nearby Cambria that we could send them to. Allow homeless to live in sanctioned homeless okay. camps with access to hygiene services, uh, better, access to how, better access to housing services and support. Okay, so that's one thing. And sanitation hygiene guide for employees okay. Working with homeless and including use of N95 masks and gloves to protect against COVID-19 transmission. So the COVID-19 needs to be involved, included into the policy. Uh, promote transfer of Cambria homeless into county shelters, which accept individuals with substance abuse and mental health issues, along with pets belongings and belongings, something that came from Santa Clara, uh, with treatment and supportive services. So uh, that should be incorporated. And then monitor existing basic hygiene resources, including portable toilets, hand washing stations, and dumpsters. So that's what they put in place, but we need, it needs to be uh, over, uh, is overseen. Um, offer free public trans passes and other transportation options for people who uh, are unhoused or access service, uh, to access services and, and, and relocate. So, you know, we want you to move in. Here's a ticket, you know, <laughs> go someplace else, you know. Here's a ticket to Paso Robles. Uh, solicit private sector donations and bequeaths to fund health and safety services and shelter for people who are un unhoused. So I don't think there's any reason why the, the CCSD, be it the general manager or somebody in um, authority with the CCSD could not solicit uh, private donations and bequeaths. These are things that you know, because when you know people die, uh, and general manager to write and submit grants to this is where we want the pros to do this. So the general manager to write and submit grants to improve services and costs associated with removal and relocation of illegal encampments. Uh, coordination between agencies engaging people living in encampments to ensure consistent and humane approaches to encampment resolution. Uh, and this is the pros part. The PROS Commission will coordinate with local organizations, neighborhood watch programs, and county agencies to ensure our parks and open spaces are clean and safe. So because they are parks and open space, their job is to ensure that their parks and open space are clean and safe. So I don't think they can argue with this particular aspect of the encampment code or policy. Um, and then uh, I, something needs to be removed here. Uh, the corporation, I have something that probably should have been removed. Okay. Uh, the CCSD will appoint a staff person to sit on the county public health department's homeless services oversight council, HSOC or HSOC, uh, to coordinate with countywide agency who address homelessness, such as transitions, mental health, community action partners, of San Luis Obispo in, uh, incorporated as CAPSLO, County of San Luis Obispo Behavioral Health Prevention and Outreach Division, Prado Daycare, Women's Shelter, which is now called something else. Um, and then also I added in, and I put it here twice, but this is, these are notes. Uh, and that is, and I'll skip what I wrote here and I'll go on to the next point. Uh, Publicize United Way hotline number 211. This is like 911 only, it's 211 for homeless services for San Luis Obispo County. And I included a, a web uh, site for that. So. And then also I had it, I added in just a few notes from Becky Jorgensen, um, you, you know, when you do assessments, add in the age of the homeless. Um, she said with young people, <laughs> tell them to get a job and then use the sheriff to remove them. Uh, so that means determining who they are and what their capabilities are and what their status is. And then if you determine that they are such that just need to be removed, then, then that should be part of the policy. Uh, the women's shelter is now called Stand Strong. Um, Take a homeless person to lunch, find out who they are. Uh, Carlos kind of does that, we frown on it, but that is something that some people do. I, I let me get, but take people to lunch in a policy, but I think that it's important to determine who these people are. Uh, pick up, uh, uh, oh, put up a sign at the FFRP 
that it's private preserve and camping is not allowed. And I think that needs to be, needs to be posted at all entrances and in the middle of, of it. And also in the beginning of each forest. I mean, you, we need to have signs all over saying, this is a preserve. You're not allowed to have your dogs off leash and you can't camp here. You know, what else they want to say. No fires. And then also, I think we're going to add in that we might want to be communicating in that list of uh, groups to communicate with uh, would be the churches, such as Santa Rosa and Vineyard. Um, okay, that's it. Oh, okay. Well, that's, thank you, yeah. thank you. That's, that's a reasonable amount of work there. Um, it was. <laughs> well, and I have, I, I, I should finish real quick. I have a call in too, and I, I'm calling back Margie Precessor. She's on the board of Capslow. I used to know Biz, who was the, uh, who was managed, uh, was the director of that. She's, she's retired. Um, I know Jill Boster White with Transitions Mental Health. So I know some of these people that are involved in these different organizations, and I did put calls into people. Uh, George Solis, who's uh, involved in that group. Uh, the reason why I put in uh, that someone needs to be a member of that uh, group, the um, SOC. Yeah, the, yeah, the SOC. Uh, needs to remember that because uh, Carlos said that he joined, but he doesn't go to the meetings. And so we, somebody has to be assigned to go to the meetings. Is it Carlos or, or Haley or somebody? Somebody has to go to those. And that should be in the policy. I see. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, let me see. So that's um, eventually we'll come forward with uh, something to, to, to the board. But this is a, you know, yeah. this, this is a big issue. And I, I can see a lot of different approaches here as to how much detail you want to get into or uh, and you may you may actually want a sections that more general policy where it's we talk about this is the goal this is our the end results that we wish to have mm -hmm. and then you could go from there perhaps into thinking well and these are the acceptable means by which these end results could be obtained I, there's a couple of ways of you know many ways of dealing with that but uh, I, I'm not expecting anyone to come up with any great answers uh, real soon. It's just, uh, but the investigation needs to continue. Um, later on, we can talk a little bit about when you guys might feel ready to come forth uh, with something that we could actually uh, get ready to pass to the board. So very good, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. The other two ad hocs we have are disaster preparedness and vets hall fees. Uh, if there's been no change, we don't really need to go into that. Uh, I know Gordon, okay. you had said something you, you thought you might be ready, but are, how are you doing? Are we okay as we are now? Or? Well, I haven't progressed much and the, the fire chief hasn't added any comments. So I'm still in limbo to put a uh, plan together that would coordinate his efforts. Oh, okay, good. So I think we're pretty good on that for uh, uh, ad hoc committee. I, don't, I think I covered them all. Uh, there was also the vets hall fees, but again, I think that one we can probably, uh, uh, Ted, I'll talk to you about that. We may decide that we're finished with that for the time being. Uh, it kind of depends, but maybe you and I, uh, let me talk to you out offline on that one. Okay. Okay. Making a note to myself. Uh, very good. So we are now ready. This is the, that was the committee reports. And now we are ready for public comment. Uh, Haley? Did we, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did Claude. you want a little report about the lighting? Oh, uh, sure. Yes. Oh. It's, on the it's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Oh, oh, it's on the agenda. So that can yeah. come down later. Okay. So is that, is that coming up on the agenda or? Okay. I don't have it in front of me. So I, oh, okay. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so you have public comment right now, and then you're going to go to that, or? Well, it's going to be, uh, I'll tell you what, because you don't have it in front of you. Let me read the agenda for anyone who might not have it in front of them. <laughs> so we have the, uh, the consent agenda, well, we have the public comment, yeah. and we have the, we need to approve or disapprove, or whatever, the business of the last meeting. That's the consent agenda. And then we got four items of regular business. Uh, we have the uh, mission statement, which I'm, I think we can either, we should be fairly quickly. Uh, and then uh, a policy for applying for grants, and then I think uh, some revisions there, which we will be looking at. And then uh, filling a vacancy on the board of directors. That's probably gonna take a fair amount of discussion. And uh, then we have the policy regarding street lighting. Which, oh, okay. Yeah, discussion and consideration. Okay. So um, let, let's get through the uh, public comment and consent agenda and then review our order of business to see if we need to uh, 
because it's, it's entirely possible we might, might not get through everything, and I really have no intention of keeping you past 4.30. So uh, uh, we, we might <laughs> we might want to look at that. So first of all, uh, yeah, so public comment first. Haley, do we have any public comment? I have no public comment at this time. Oh, thank you, Haley. Okay, it's moving right on then uh, to the consent agenda. Uh, do we have any, uh, anyone wish to move the acceptance of the uh, consent agenda? I'm moving that. I'm sorry, Leslie, was that a moving, uh, was that a yes? yes? Okay. That's it. Yeah. Leslie, nice. moved, okay, and, and seconded by Gordon. So moved by Leslie, seconded by Gordon to accept the consent agenda. Anybody have any uh, issues on that? We're good? Okay. All those in favor, please uh, say, yeah, I'll, I'll just call them out. Okay. Ted, how, are you in favor? Yes. Uh, it's unanimous. So unanimously passed. I'm moving right along. Yeah, we're just charging forth here. So here's, the, again, to repeat, uh, so we've got the, uh, the mission statement. I recommend we do that first and get it off our plates because I think we can do it in five minutes. Uh, you're either going to like what I uh, what I put together or not. So, uh, and then uh, the second thing is the policy on applying for grants. Uh, I, then the next one is the vacancy on the board of directors. That's probably going to take the most discussion. And then the next one, uh, and the last one was the street lighting. So, are you comfortable with that order, or do we need to change anything? I see nodding. I see everybody. No one's taking. Okay. So we'll stay with the order as it is. So the first thing is the mission statement. Let me bring up uh, my mission statement here. Hold on a minute. I can find it. Oh, here it is. And I'll share my screen. Do you think it's possible? Can I get a hard copy? That? Yeah. Well, the email. Okay. That's the email. Oh, she right. sent me. Yeah. She's supposed to send it to you already. I can get it. Uh, where is my screen? Is this it? Uh, here. Mm -hmm. No, not here. Okay, no. I have to send it to Christine. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll read it. It's just a three sentences long, so it's not anything that should challenge you too much. Uh, let me make sure you, let me make it big enough for you all to read, though. Bigger is good. Is it good? Are you good? Bigger. Being bigger is good. Bigger? Make it bigger. <laughs> uh, hold on a minute. Yeah. It's working. Okay. Yeah. We'll try it this way. How's that? Much better. Can you all see that? Yeah. Okay. So this is the new statement assembled by me. And it's, uh, it is really, it's only three sentences. Part of it's from John. Part of it's from Claudia, and part of it is from the original uh, in our old bylaws. So I'll read it in my deathless prose here. Are you ready? Okay. So uh, the policy committee serves as an advisory resource to the CCSD Board of Directors to instill public trust and transparency on matters of operational and governance policy. Mm -hmm. In addition to policy work assigned to it by the Board of Directors, the committee reviews existing operational and governance policies focusing on the CCSD Board Policy Handbook and recommends new policies and changes to existing policies to the Board. The committee develops policies that are legal, clear, and ethical and that protect the interests of CCSD employees, Cambria rate and taxpayers, the general public, and the environment. So three sentences. Last one. Uh, one. So uh, I, I present that to you. Uh, so uh, if anyone would care to, uh, whoops, what did I just do? There we are. I lost you guys for a minute. So um, okay. I have a comment. Uh, yeah, John. Uh, yes, please. So I, I have difficulty with the last sentence. For me, the last sentence should be <laughs> in the mission statement of the board of directors and not for a committee that does some work assigned to it by the board of directors. Um, the, first of all, the committee does more than develop. It says in the policy above that we review and do other things, not just develop. And we approve or authorize or, or give approval to no policies. We only recommend policies. And, and so this, I, I have no problem with the intent of the statement, legal, clear, ethical, and so on and so forth. But 
that's the that's the board of directors. It is not this committee. Okay. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, any other comments here? I would all speak at once. Claudia. Uh, I I disagree with him. I I don't think there's any problem with putting it in there. I think that I think that it because we are a standing committee of the CCSD, we should act in um, in, in the interest of the ratepayers, the general public, the environment, uh, legal and uh, to the best of our knowledge, legal and ethical ways. Um, I, I just, I don't, I don't see anything that's wrong with that. I mean, why wouldn't we want to, to do these things? Uh, if we aren't doing that, then we're not presenting the types of ethical and legal and, you know, um, you know, policies to, to the CCSD board. Now we can't always know that they're legal. We do try to do that, but to the best of our knowledge, you could, you could add that in there as far as legal, but we do often look at, at the legal aspects of things. I had just a wording thing. I, I thought you were a little bit redundant someplace in here, but I'd have to look at it more closely. <laughs> it was just a little, a little redundancy. That was, that was my only comment really, but I, it was taken to a vote, you know, see what people think. Yeah, well, let's see. Well, first we got Leslie and then Ted. Um, I agree with Mr. Nixon. Uh, the last sentence is the, the board's responsibility, not ours. I think that if you remove the last sentence, everything else is fine with the statement. So I have to agree with Mr. Nixon on this one as well. Okay, thank you, Leslie. Uh, Ted. Well, I absolutely see Mr. Nixon's point. Um, I, I think that the sentence could be uh, uh, expanded somewhat to say, you know, the committee in conjunction with the, uh, you know, with the board develops these policies. But uh, it, it is true that the, that really the the business of uh, establishing policies that meet these clear ethical interests, you know, for for everybody that really is the purview of the uh, of the board. But I but but we're but we are acting. We are acting in concert. We are acting. Um, uh, we are acting at the pleasure of the board uh, to help them do these things. So perhaps the the the, the I, I know what you're trying to get at with this sentence, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but yeah, I, I I agree. I think that 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 really puts uh these things only in the purview of the committee and i'm i don't think that's quite right okay thank you ted uh let's see uh, did i oh yeah gordon i think uh we need to hold the uh, ccsd board to the expectations of what the community is thinking and not necessarily what the ccsd board wants to hear because we as policymakers have to ensure that what we're putting in print will be supportive of this uh, CCSD board and future ones. So there should be something maybe to the results that instead of develops it may uh, support these functions. So I think without okay. this, it's not uh, meaningful to, for us to move forward on anything. Okay, uh, okay. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, yeah, John. Oh, no. Well, we're not policy makers. We're policy recommenders, number one, and we're not a committee of the community. We're a committee of the board. We exist and serve the, at the pleasure of the board, not the community. If, if this sentence appeared in a board document of purpose, values, uh, principles, repeating it here would be fine with me, but I don't want it to appear in a committee statement unless it is a board authorized position. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, Claudia? Maybe we should uh, rewrite this just a little bit, wordsmith it just a little bit, so it's a little bit more palatable to Leslie and, and, and uh, John, and submit it to the board and see what they say. Uh, because okay. if they approve of this, then, then we have their, you know, they may just approve this because I, I think that we just need to rewrite it a little bit so that it, it doesn't make it sound like we're, sound like we're the authority. But you know, just the fact that we use these, these are part of our parameters that we take these things in consideration, taking into consideration um, ethical um, and, you know, ethical and, you know, I don't know, policies that, you know, that take into consideration the CCSD employees and rate payers. Of course we do. I mean, of course we do that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I mean, how else do we determine these things? I mean, the whole thing right. about, 
you know, writing letters to the board, you know, not getting an answer. That's ratepayers, you know, ratepayers making an inquiry, not getting a response. We need to be thinking about that. So it needs to be in our mission statement that we do that, that we take these things in consideration. If John, you want to rewrite that, uh, I, you know, I, I think that'd be great because and I, uh, the one thing you really definitely need to leave in there, that is that we take into consideration the environment because it's a big part of what's happening as far as what the CCSD does. It affects it and it mm. very, well, better, bigger than just about anything going on in this town. Well, again, Claudia, I can agree with you in principle, I 100%. But uh, the, right. the board needs to have that position. We, we do not create positions and values and principles for the board. The board ha has to create its own. And we are, are, are tasked with following those principles, not creating them. Uh, yes, I, I see a whole lot of stuff. Uh, okay, let me see Leslie first and then Claudia. Again, I have to agree with Mr. Nixon on this as well. I appreciate that these are issues that we all agree with. That is true. But I see, I, I watched the video of the presentation of what happened with Don at the CCSD meeting. And I can guarantee you that if it's written in this format, it is not going to fly. I can guarantee it. It's going to have to be rewritten here. I appreciate that there's these battles. Don, you taught me this. Which hill is the hill that we all want to die on here, okay? And we already had a pretty interesting battle that happened with you at the forefront of this. So it is a, a, a difficult sentence for this current board who would be willing to accept that, A. And B, it's an incremental changes. This, you know, I appreciate wanting to do these massive changes in the direction of the CCSD, but wouldn't it be better to take small baby steps in this idea? Just getting the term environment involved or included in this statement in itself is going to be quite dramatic. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it needs to be rewritten. I think, I think that there may be some way of incorporating this, but also I would like to get some policies passed here and, and, this, and our mission statement passed here. And I can tell you, I can guarantee you there's going to be a battle over this final line in this document here from what I've seen so far to date for what we're dealing with. So I just don't feel like we should be, uh, what is it, Don, you said, uh, dying on this hillside? <laughs> for this uh, yeah, well, you know, you pick your balance, you know. Yeah. You, can, you can come back and address this next year, if possible, to go ahead and do some more tweaking on it. But right now, that's going to cause an interesting situation to happen here with the board, the current board. Uh, oh yeah, you, and then I think Ted may have had something there. And I just then, wonder. Uh, say uh, something in a minute here. Go ahead, Claudia. I, I just wonder um, what what um, what guidelines we use in our mission. I mean, if we have no guidelines, then I don't I don't understand how we can write a pol uh, write a, a mission statement without without a <laughs> without a manner in which we do what we do if you know i without saying that we do this you know with the you know i don't know with the best interests interests of the ccsd rate payers in mind or something i mean then what are we we're writing policy but we're not we're not answerable to anybody except for the board of directors but that doesn't mean anything i mean we need to say how we how we as a group, how we function when we present things to the board. And, you know, so, you know, I don't know how to say that off the top of my head, but I, but I think that it's important that we, that is, that it is part of our, how we, how we operate. And, and that can be an emission statement. So. Okay, thank you, Claudia. Uh, Ted, I think you had your hand. Yeah, yeah, the only, the only thing I have left to say is I, I, I I'm glad Mr. Nixon brought this up because I think I think he's absolutely correct. The the issue here though is, you know, these first three the words, the committee develops. Well, we we develop or we uh work on policies in conjunction with the with the board. Uh you know, I, I think I think we need to we need to make it so that it so that it's understood that, that what we are doing is operating uh, underneath the umbrella of of, of of the board because like it or not that is what we are doing. Um, we can suggest things, of course. We can 
we can we can uh, do all those things. There's nothing here that that says we can't. Uh, uh, and I just I just think that uh, for us to say you know our committee develops policies. Well, yes, but we do so with the, uh, the with the assistance, blessing, what have you, of, of the board. Now. They may very well. We may make that change to this to this uh, sentence, and they may very well have you know have, have a, a fit over uh, some of the other things in here. I don't know. I, you know, I would probably I would probably wordsmith it a little bit, submit it to the board, and 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 see if uh, you know see if uh, uh, you know see if there's a nuclear explosion on the horizon or what. I don't know. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I truly see John's point. I do. Turn them off. Okay, thank you, Ted. Um, let's see. At some point, I want to just sort of jump in here for a minute. But did everybody kind of have their say, pretty much? I think. Uh, yeah, well, you know, yeah. okay. um, I don't think you really need to say it because you say it in the first sentence of the, that we serve it as an advisory resource to the CCSD board. You know, the committee works with the boards, kind of the same thing. So you, I, I think it's redundant, but you know. Okay, I just thought I'd see what it looked like. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think if you're going to put, if you're going to say the committee works with the board to develop policies based on uh, CCSD ethics, you know, <laughs> so you say, you know CCSD, you know, you know, not, not our ethics, you know, it's their ethics. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I summarize the discussion up to this point here, and I do see the concerns, and that was, I think, was the original discussion where we basically. <laughs> was my attempt to try to draw together uh, two different polarities here that into some kind of possible compromise. Uh, one thing that is clear to me, and I was as I was doing this, I realized that the last sentence is really a policy about policies. Yeah. And, and uh, it is appropriate for the board to have a policy about policies. Uh, they don't have one, you know, and it might be something where we could recommend to the board that they consider a policy about policies. And oh, by the way, here is one that we like, you know, that's another way to go on it. Uh, so that's one thing. Now, the other thing, uh, uh, Claudia, you mentioned something rather interesting. Unfortunately, I don't think that, see, the problem, we, if, we only, if we had total control over our own bylaws, we could have a mission statement and leaving out this set last sentence. And then in the bylaws, we could have additional words which said, and the, this committee shall pursue the, you know, have these following values. But the problem is that we don't have control over our own bylaws. The board writes our bylaws. So in one way or another, the board would have to pass on this sentence, <laughs> one way or another. Uh, I suppose we could, uh, within our own group, just as a, uh, we, we could pass a resolution saying that this committee, as it's currently constituted, has as its goal the intention to produce policies that are legal, clear, ethical, you know, we could do that as a resolution just amongst ourselves. That is definitely a possibility. But to get it into some bylaws, uh, that's board action. So again, uh, is would this pass your muster if we left off the last sentence? Or Claudia, do you feel so strongly about having it in the mission statement that we need to go further down this road? Or could we take just the last, the first two sentences? I'm the front. Modified words. Yeah, Claudia, go ahead. I think that if we rewrote this and it was less uh, inflammatory by using the word environment, or ethical, which are words that have, we've been told by this current CCSD that they do not like to be ethical. Uh, and at least one of them said that. Um, and they don't like to do things that, are, that protect the environment. Maybe leave out ethical and environment and maybe there's a way that we can say that we write them uh, you know, as clearly as possible or something like that and put that into the text, you know, clearly and, and protect. And I, I don't know what, uh, with, with consideration of the the rate payers or something, you know, you have to say something about what we think of when we write policy. You can't just say that it doesn't say anything, you know, that's what we have to do to be palatable to the CCSD. Okay, let me, let me back up. You know, I, I started late on in this, in this committee and I thought the committees, as I remember when they were being formed, that people were, were accusing the, um, the CCSD as, being, uh, as not being transparent 
And uh, there, there is and there has been a lot of uh, dealings that happen kind of behind closed doors. And so to, to help uh, kind of allay the fears of the public and to appear more transparent, these committees were formed, the policy, the infrastructure, you know, and the finance. So, uh, but I've discovered after being on the committee for a few months that um, we are not really uh, able to do that job. And so now, you know, you're saying, you know, the majority of you are now are saying, well, actually, two out of, uh, Gordon hasn't said anything. Okay, so half of, half of us are yeah. saying that, or, huh? I was with you. Oh, okay. Uh, it's that, uh, yeah. No. that you know if half of our board doesn't want to talk about these things or in, in, interject these things um i just wonder what we're called to do um if we're puppets of the ccsd or are we a committee that's supposed to bring uh the thoughts of the community and and you know eth thinking in, in in ethical ways and in, in protecting the environment i mean what else are we supposed to i, I did you know every policy we write has to do with the best interests of the ratepayers. has to do with the environment, has to do with you know, all these different things. And to leave that out of our mission, however you want to say it, just seems wrong. So if we could make it palatable so that the board will accept it without putting any buzzwords in there that would bother them, you know, uh, then I do believe that somehow that needs to be incorporated, not as a whole sentence, but incorporated into just some of the words that you use in the middle of this, and maybe, uh, um, maybe instead of SIRS as an advisory, maybe include the uh, sentence you said about uh, with uh, in conjunction with the, the the CCSD because they like us to work, to, you know, in collaboration with the CCSD or whatever you, words you want to use. Um, and, and I do think that you know who maybe you could say the CCSD who who works in the best you know for the best interests of the community or something you know so that we're not saying we do that but we're working for them and they do this i that's you know mm -hmm. something in my head so mm -hmm. something needs to be I, I, i'm arguing i'm sorry that's okay all right uh let's see leslie and then i, I have a question i'm trying to find i i don't know if there's a compromise here right, go ahead leslie if you take the committee develops policies that are legal clear ethical and protect the interests of CCAC, that is a given. And if you reverse that, that's a challenge to the board. I again say that this last sentence, I appreciate that we understand. I like your idea of resolution, Don, that we have a resolution among ourselves that this is the direction we may be intending to go on. But the whole history of policy was to create a policy manual. That was our focus from day one. It was not supposed to be a podium to express our own political beliefs. We were supposed to be objective and neutral in this situation. And this statement is not objective or neutral in my opinion. It is going to cause a furor for the current board of directors at this point. So this is, and it's not just ethical and environmental, legal and clear is gonna be a challenge as well. So again, I like the first two lines of this statement. I think the third needs to be seriously redesigned and rethought out on here because it's going to be challenged and it's just gonna be thrown out. They're not going to allow us to go ahead and go through with this. Incremental changes, small, not sledgehammer. So I appreciate all the work that's been on this and I apologize for being so conservative, mm -hmm. but we be objective here. This is an objective decision-making process for policy. And uh, these are givens. I see it as legal, clear, ethical, and protect the interests of CCSC. Well, of course, that's what we're doing. You're just re reiterating what is a, is a given in this situation. So let's do the resolution for our group. Let's leave it simple and get this through. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Leslie. And uh, John, and then I have a comment. Go ahead, John. Oh, you're still muted. The, the, the other two committees in the commission have simple mission statements that reflect on essentially what we're saying. We say actually a little more in two sentences. I'm not counting the third. Finance Committee serves as an advisory resource to Canberra Community Services District Board of Directors to provide transparent budget processes and financial management that promotes fiscal stability and instill public trust. We say that. And, and, and the other committee, resources, says that, and pros says that, and that's all we can say. I agree with Don, this, this last sentence should be a policy on policies <laughs> that, uh, that the, the directors create. We have no business going in that direction. The other committees haven't, we won't either. 
Right. Thank you, John. Um, let me see. I, um, I was going to comment on this. Uh, can we, I'm trying to find something that we can actually, I'd like to get this off our plate at some level. I think what I'd like to do is um, if we could talk about just the first two sentences and and then what I'd like to do is uh, I would like to bring back basically the third sentence in the context of either making a resolution which should inform our own work as long as this particular committee with this particular group of members exists, uh, either that or that we actually commence working on a policy on policies, uh, which might actually be the way to go because the board, we don't have one and I think we could probably talk the board into asking for one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so that's a possibility. And we, we could go ahead and get our ducks in order on that one if we wanted. So, uh, yeah, yeah, let's see, Claudia, I think you had your hand I, I'm good. I'm good with exactly what you just said, a policy on policies, and we could have this as a, uh, uh, you know, the last sentence as something that we do in-house. I'm, okay. I'm good with that. You like that? All right, so we're, so we're up to the first two sentences now, right? Uh, yeah, Ted? I agree. Let's get this part of the mission statement nailed down. Send this, you know, the one thing that's true about mission statements universally is that they get reviewed. Mission statements are not, you know, tablets and stone. Mission statements are living documents. I would say, let's get this off our plate for right now with these two sentences that definitely do the job. And, you know, we can review the business of making a policy on policies, which sounds like a good idea. Um, you know, we, we've got a lot of work to do and, you know, this, and not bog us down. Yeah, okay, well, thank you, Ted. Uh, let's see, John, uh, John, everybody have a chance? Uh, John, you had a, a change in the wording of the second sentence, I believe, that you wanted to have? Something about the issue of reviews? No. No? So is it good as is, the set first two sentences? Are we Fine with me, there's a typo now in the word policies. I'm gonna get rid of that one, fair. <laughs> Nothing like word. So, uh, shall we then, if someone would like to move the first, that we adopt the first sentence and pass it on to the- First uh, two sentences. Yeah, first two Mike is on. Uh, is on. Uh, say something. Can I say something? Oh, oh, well, uh, public, can, public, let me, public, uh, public let me, comment? Uh, you, there, yes, we should have public comment. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's do the public comment before the motion. Okay, go ahead, Crosby. Thank you, thank you. The thing is, I've been to enough CCSD board meetings and that thing where it says in addition to the policy work assigned. And they had a heart attack on that. The guy said they only want you to work on what they assign. So I would look at that sentence also. Uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, any further public comment? Uh, uh, oh, let me oh, respond uh, to Laura's actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, the board has not acted on that particular issue. Uh, an ad hoc subcommittee is formed with uh, Amanda and uh, Cindy. And, and the, the very issue, and I haven't lobbied either of them on this yet, uh, the, the issue that they're dealing with is how, what, how does work come before us? And actually, how does work come before any of the, uh, of the standing committees? Uh, and my impression is they probably want to restrict it to the point where we only talk about what the board tells us to talk about. And I have to tell you that is not my position, but uh, nevertheless, <laughs> But it's it's not yet decided. Uh, so yeah, Laura, the, it it is a matter which will be up for discussion, and I will I will be sorry if they adopt too restrictive an issue on that. And, and I might as well tell you because I've told you all this before. Uh, it's my little soapbox, but I won't stay on it very long. I I do view these committees as a way in which the information can be exchanged and concerns can be brought forward. Uh, to the board is another pathway. And I would really, I would be very sad to lose that as an, as an, as an option, just as a director. Uh, I think that we need to make it as easy as possible for stuff to come before the board. But anyway, that's just my own, you know, which is neither. So right now we are, we, we are free. Uh, we're following the rules that I originally established in which the bylaws are a little bit silent on, which is if you got two, two, if two people want to put something on the agenda, or actually three, you need a, you know, 
a majority vote, uh, you can vote to put anything you want on the agenda. Doesn't mean that necessarily it would pass forward to the board, but it means that we can discuss anything or we can discuss whether we're going to discuss something, which is perfectly legitimate in my opinion. In fact, we're gonna to get to that shortly. So uh, apropos, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take your time. So if this sentence can stand as it is, if we're all happy with it, uh, and is there a motion to accept this sentence and pass it to the board? Okay, uh, mo moved by Claudia, is there a second? Seconded by Ted Key, so it's been moved and seconded that the following statement be passed to the board and recommended for inclusion in the policy committee's bylaws. Namely, the policy committee serves as an advisory resource to the CCSB Board of Directors to instill public trust and transparency on matters of operational governance and policy. In addition to policy work assigned to it by the Board of Directors, the committee reviews existing operational and governance policies focusing on the CCSD Board Policy Handbook and recommends new policies and changes to existing policies to the board. So that has been moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, yeah, Claudia. I'm just going to say that, um, I, you know, I, I, I understand what Laura was saying. Um, I, I would like to see this go forward to the CCSD, and if they reject that part of it, you know, I guess we'll find out. But we have brought things forward, like the lighting uh, policy, um, you know, and, and, you know, a couple other things. I'm, and there's a bunch of things that we've brought forward that, that aren't in the policy, current policy handbook or in current policy. And um, they haven't, they haven't really stopped us from doing that. So uh, that, that I'm just saying that historically they haven't stopped us, but then again, we haven't had them all approve everything we brought forward either. So anyway, so. Okay, well, thank you, Claudia. Uh, yeah, Leslie. Claudia, did you have a chance to see the CCSD tape where Don was trying to do the 50 front, that actual discussion that he sent out to us? Did you review that? No, I'm sorry. You need to review that because that shows exactly what we're up against here. That's why I'm so forceful on this document right now because it was quite uh, dramatic on how they were making, trying to figure out what, where this came from, how dare we bring it forward. It was, you need to review the tape that Don sent to you from the last CCSD meeting. You'll understand why we're, I'm being more conservative today than I would have been the day before that meeting, okay? You, you're talking about the, the 25 or 35 foot lot adjustment thing that-, that? Yeah. Okay. To, sent out an email and had video from the CCSD meeting showing that exact altercation that just happened and it was quite a, uh, uh, a, a crash course derby, let's put it that way. And he did very well defending his position and the position of policy, but it, you need to review that tape to understand why I'm being so conservative today on yeah. moving forward. Okay, so thank you. Uh, any, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, we're ready for the question. Uh, all those in favor, I'm not gonna read the motion again. All those in favor of adopting the uh, two sentence mission statement I just read, please. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead and raise your hands and I can, as long as I see you all, I see everybody, it's, uh, a, a, the motion is unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yes, do, do listen to that. It's pretty good entertainment if you don't get <laughs> too involved, you know. Okay, I'm gonna unshare this screen here. There we go. Uh, moving to the next item. Uh, this is the discussion and consideration of the district's policy on applying for grants. And I think we have, do we have anything to share on this, John? I forget. I, what had, I had sent it around along quite a while, a, few, a week or two ago. That's what I thought. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna need to share it just, just so that the public can see it. So forgive me for a minute while I try to locate it. It, it's a, the latest version has one uh, change in green and one change in red. Got it. Okay, let me look here. Okay, hold on a minute. This is going to take me a minute. Actually, I'll tell you what. Um, and when I say change, I mean from our last meeting and the discussion yeah, we had. Yeah, it was, it was a relatively small, as I recall. And I've got to get my email back up. Sorry about this. For some reason, I Did it send it to you? Oh, I just didn't, you know, I was, I was getting stuff ready to share and for some reason, I don't know why I forgot that one. Well, I sent, I sent it around to everyone. But. Oh, I know you did. Yeah. <laughs> and it just wasn't thinking straight here. Uh, let me see. So, 
Where is it? Once you have him read read what he's the changes he made while you're looking for that. Yeah, that would be good, John. If you could. Uh, I so, think. I I if, I will do that if you like. John, can you remind me how long ago you sent that? I'd have to look back in my emails to see when I sent it. I, I that would take me a few minutes. But. Nine nine fifteen. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> oh, no, no, nine four. I'm sorry, nine, nine four. four. Oh, nine four. Okay. Oh, here. Not too. Oh, here it is. Okay, got it. Colleagues, thank you for your input on the draft. Is that it, John? And not only did I attach uh, a, rev a revised draft, but I also, in my email, presented uh, uh, what I did and why I did it, or why I didn't do something. I mean, Got it. Well, let me let me share this up then. I, now that I found it, let me let me try to create a little more space. And get it bigger. Give me just a minute while I try to get the size up here, and then I'll share it. Yeah, John, John can give us the, the yeah, presentation. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Oh, here, yeah, let me, let me go ahead and start now. the share. Yeah, it, otherwise I'm going to have to read through this big hairy email. And, and the, no, you don't need that here. It's, well, it's, no, I mean, John can summarize way yeah, fast. You want to summarize your argument then? And I'll, meanwhile, I'll try to make okay. it. The, the, from our, of course, my notes, my interpretation from our discussion at the last meeting, there were two areas of, of suggested uh, change to to the draft that we discussed. Uh, one had to do with um, having wording that that dis defined the limits of the general manager's fiscal authority in approving grants, including uh, limits that would be uh, a part of matching funds. Mm -hmm. and, and so I added a sentence to the draft in green under the uh, with the first sentence under policy, and then the second paragraph I, I added to a sentence um, in red. Okay. My intent, my intent, in the, my intent with the green and the red was to um, uh, uh, implement, so to speak, in the draft, the discussion we had that we should put in the, uh, we should refer to the, to the authority the general manager has for making decisions on spending money, essentially, or, or allocating or authorizing or encumbering money. The second point of discussion or suggestion from the discussion was that we include toward the end of the policy um, a, a citation of the, the inability, this is my phrase, the inability of the pros commission to apply for a grant and so most of what my email narrative talks about is that I believe that's unnecessary. Uh, we don't cite the three policy committees and we, uh, I don't, there's no reason to cite pros. Pros has no authority, no fiscal agency whatsoever to approve or apply for uh, a grant. They, they, they can recommend grants, they can fill out grant applications, but they cannot do they cannot submit a grant application or be awarded a grant on its on the authority of the pros commission. They have no agency whatsoever. So I don't see why we would say that. Okay. okay. Question? Uh, yeah. Okay, Leslie. Um, Mr. Nixon, uh, pros just did that. Yes. They would signed off on a grant with Carlos without any authority whatsoever from the general manager or from the director. So I just want to well, give then, you a head. Well, then the that's a problem for the general manager and the board of directors. Right. No, I agree. I don't think it should be in our policy. I'm just saying that the reason that came up was because they had, that's what triggered the general manager taking control back over the grant programs was that you had different departments writing their own grants without anyone knowing that they were actually doing and then signing off for matching funds liability for those grants to the CCSD. That's why he triggered this whole situation. So, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I, that's a problem. I agree, but and it should not be in the actual policy statement, but that was why that was brought up as a discussion because there was a pattern of behavior here that had just happened, had just uh, obligated us to twenty five thousand uh, dollars a potential matching fund by an employee signing off on it. Oh. Well, I, I mean, I that's a, that is as I say, that's a problem. But I think the policy yeah. needs to define uh, the authority. But but we don't need to say in that 
policy statement that the personnel department, the public works department, it can't, I mean, we don't need to say that. It's, Agreed. You know. Agreed. So I think we're, yeah, it seems like you, <laughs> we're preaching to each other, the choir, you know, two choirs preaching here. Um, anybody have any comments on this? Any que questions, comments? Are we ready to uh, vote on this then? Uh, oh, well, we need to call for public comment. Uh, yes, uh, public comment. Uh, Crosby, since I see your hand, I'll go ahead and call you. Well, thank you. Um, I just want to point out that in the, in, on the section on policy there, after the red uh, uh, modifications, it says the board of directors shall approve all grants awarded to the district. It, it almost sounds like you can't disapprove a grant. What, is, that, is that the intention of this wording? No, uh, no, no, of course it's not. In fact, that particular sentence, um, I, I actually took from a policy that I lived with in my previous life. It, it doesn't, it, that shouldn't be the implication. It's just that any award is, is approved. This, this policy has mostly to do with a, the application authority, but any awards that come would be approved. So, John, should we perhaps change the wording on that a little bit to approve? Well, final approval. I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I see that. I see Crosby's point, mm -hmm. and yet I, I see that what you really meant is that. Well, after the grant has been submitted, as it goes forward, the general manager has to approve the and accept the grant. Is that final right? approval? Final. Well, uh, boards, public board. If 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 the public board and the entity it, it oversees receives revenue from whatever source, the public board has to approve the receipt of that. Uh, that's, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it could be a grant, it could be something else. And, and generally, I that see. results in a budget change. Got it. And that also is approved by the board. But the I implication, I mean, the inference is whatever the inference is to whoever's reading it, but the implication from that I intended was that just the boards approve awards, they, you know, they have to. Yeah, no, I, I see that now and I, so I see it, that's exactly what we want. The board must approve all awards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that, that is, I understand that now. Mm -hmm. I, Leslie, I believe you had your hand up. Yeah, um, I say that leave it the way it is because that's exactly what just happened here with another um, a, a group of individuals who signed off on an actual grant that was not approved by the board and we were awarded the funds that was not approved by the board and we had to match the funds that were awarded oh. after the fact. So I, I like the way it stands to tell you because I think we should leave it as it was written. Okay, uh, any further comment? Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, Gordon. There's a question here that says it will be within the manager's uh, uh, approval authority. And typically, these are matching funds. So if you have a $25,000 limit, does that mean he can go to 50000 instead without any consequence? Uh, John, what is the intent? It, yeah. it, when I say including required matching funds, that, that's inclusive of, of, of an award or a match. and. And, uh, and the other point you remind me of is I, I didn't put in the $25,000 as because that can change right. with right. every meeting of the board of directors. So I, but the intention is including, not in addition to, but including required matching funds. Well, that's what I'm just trying to verify. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the word, the wording on that one. Oh, here it is here. Yeah. Acting with limited. So, uh, so the, just for clarification, John, so if the, uh, presume for a moment that the general manager's approval authority is at 25,000, so a grant that, uh, if, if he had a grant that was for 30,000 with 15,000 matching funds, that would be beyond his approval authority and would have to go to the board. I think that's what I'm hearing. That is what you're reading. Now you could ask me if I think that's right, but that's not my uh, I that's not my it. issue. You know, I, I, I would give I would give open authority to the general manager, but that's not where this was headed. So yeah. we have the limit. No, I and I think it makes sense to me. I see what you, what what we have here. So I don't have a problem with it. Uh, 
what, let me tell you what I like about it. <laughs> uh, the, the, the issue and the reason this came had to do with when the checkpoints occur. And right. so I think that this, this, I don't know if the board's gonna approve of this or not, but I like it in that it says, the board of directors shall be informed as soon as possible following submission. So, so, so the board will know as soon as it's physically possible, you know, that a, a, a submission, a grant application has been made. But further, there was more to it, as soon as possible. And then once the grant comes in, the board must again enter the picture and say, yes, we want this grant and we're going to provide, you know, and we adjust the budget. So I like that. It, it comes in the front. We don't have an onerous uh, set of approvals in the uh, mi middle of the uh, process. And then we have the approval at the end. So for me, it works. I and, in and in relationship to the policy the board approved a month or so ago, which was, which was tied specifically to the uh, project with the uh, wastewater uh, system, th this does not include procedures. That included procedures that, from our opinion, were appropriate there and, and, and further uh, resulted in delays in actually having a, the ability to submit a grant. So I think it does that as well. Yeah, I, I think it's good. There, there were too much, there was too much in the other, uh, too many approvals going on. Right. And, and I like that because really the general manager, he's the guy who, if things don't go right, he's the one that's going to get fired. It won't be the other folks. Well, that's, so, that was my point. If you don't trust your CEO, then get rid of him. You know what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs> uh, Claudia, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think I'm, I just have to have this clarified here. Uh, we're saying that the, the board should be uh, aware of grants that the general manager has applied for. And then the general manager receives a grant and then the board has to approve it after it's already been, been uh, awarded. So I'm not sure how, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. How do you approve a grant that's already been approved, that's already been awarded? Well, a grant can be a grant can be awarded, and and then the the entity receiving the grant can say no, thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah, you're saying that they have to approve all grants that they're awarded. So I'm back to what uh, Crosby was saying. I think that should be more clear as to what your intention is on that. And Ted's waving his hand. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry, Ted. Yeah, go ahead. I think I think the conundrum here is this business of shadow. Oh. Uh, and, and in this case, it, 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 you could say the board of directors shall approve or shall not approve. The, the bottom line is here, we're, we're saying that the board, it is in the purview of the board to review and approve or to disapprove of, of those grants. Um, you could say also the board of directors uh, has final approval or something of that nature, but I, but I, I think the word shall is 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 pointing in that direction but i don't I'm not i'm not sure that 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 uh, uh some people would find that to be clear enough and i can understand that well i, I guess i'll just make one more comment here I, I i'm sure i could go through any number of policies and oh, practices yeah. with this board where approval by the board is required but those policies and the sentences that express them do not say the board shall approve or disapprove. Right. So the, st the sentence is always the board shall approve. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, it's a small point, I suppose, but. No, no, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, Leslie, your hand. So the board of directors shall approve all grants awarded to the district. It's a safe, it's a safety mechanism because grant writing process takes a lot of time. The awarding process, is the final result of it. And if something changed fiscally with the CCSD, it would give us the right to step away. The board of directors could change their mind. So again, it is a very important sentence here. The awarded key is the key, right. especially with matching funds. So it, it covers emergency situations where fiscally we have changed our status from when the grant was originally proposed nine months ago or 12 months ago. 
Um, and so it's, 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 it's a proper sentence in this dialogue, in my opinion, and the way it's yeah. set up. The idea of shall, yeah. that, that's just the appropriate, you know, yes, they, they right. need to make sure that they're awarding this, that they, it is awarded properly, especially with matching funds. See, that's where you get into some tangles when our budget keeps changing every quarter, if there's an emergency situation and we don't have the matching funds, then we can't accept it. So it's a, right. it's a, it's a escape hatch is mm -hmm. what it is. Got it. And, and we don't say that, you know, the board of directors approves an annual budget every year. But right. wherever that's contained in statute or local, or local code, it doesn't say the board shall approve or disapprove a budget every year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, uh, Claudia, you, and then, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry about the phone, um, uh, but can you just change it to say final approval? Then I'll mute my. I think Shell, Shell does it. Final approval. Shell approve. I don't know. I, I don't know I, what I, we add there. I don't know what we gain. What it is is well, the board of directors shall approve all grants awarded to the district. The board of directors shall yeah. have final approval of. That's why I don't think we need to do that. I think it works as it is. Final approval. All right. Although I think it's a good point, Claudia. Get the final approval. Yeah, Just I don't know that we need that. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not sure what the adjective adds. They approve it. Yeah. Know, or, they, or, they, or they don't. You know. Yeah, but I, I think it would, it would uh, be better for lay people who don't understand that. Uh, uh, I mean, we already had one comment, you know, from the public saying that you, you know, you know, it needs it needs clarification because it means that any grant that comes before them, they're going to approve, and that's the way I read it too. So, uh, so maybe for those lay people that don't understand this terminology, adding that one word of final, uh, I don't think it's a big deal <laughs> you know, to add that one word. It doesn't change what it says, other than to make it more clear that that's your intent. So. Claudia, what you were proposing would be the something to the, the board of directors shall have final approval of all grants awarded yeah. to the district. Is that what yeah. you're suggesting? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. John, are you comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, uh, if we don't have any further discussion, I think we can go ahead and vote on this. How are uh, the rest of you pretty? Leslie still has one thing to say. I vote. I vote we uh, push it forward as is. All right, I think Leslie's calling for the question. All right, yeah. so uh, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but the motion will be to pass the policy, the draft policy on grants as, how can we refer to this? As detailed in John Nixon's email of somebody, the date four. on that one? <laughs> oh, 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 nine four, right? Nine four of 20. Nine four of 20. Uh, that that <laughs> policy uh, be adopted and passed on to the You've learned it. Ripping up the thing is good. Yeah, yeah, what I'll do is provide it a number, uh, a little bit of formatting and numbering uh, before I, before we send it to them. It, let, if you're a yes. guest. Yeah, we'll, yeah right. we'll we, we are acting on approval with the change of wording. Say that one more time, the wording. Oh, sorry, I, I apologize. The, uh, Board of Directors shall have final approval of. So right, okay, got final it. Final approval of. Okay. Okay, uh, I think we're good on that then. Okay, give yourselves all a pat. You got one down. Well, we haven't voted now yet. Oh, we no. haven't, oh, sorry. We don't have a second either, so. That's oh, that's true, do we have a second, please? I can always second if nobody else will, but I got <laughs> Okay, seconded by Gordon. Uh, and who 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 moved, who made the motion? Leslie. Leslie made the motion. Okay, this is for uh, the secretary's purposes here. Uh, okay, whoops. Just to ha hold on a second here, my there. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, all those in favor? I think if you if we do hands, we may be. Uh, uh, let's see, John, are you voting yes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the motion passes unanimously. Uh, is that a, 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 uh, Claudia, was were you a yes on that? Yeah, okay. Uh, unanimous, excellent. Oh, very good. Now you can pat yourselves on the back. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me unshare here again. Hold on. I'm cooking it. Oh, I lost it. Oh, I can't get for the share. Yeah. This is the bitch one. Oh, here it is.
Which one? Which one? Let's make it seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't get my numbers to work. <laughs> For the the Schwartz's are there. You should get them yeah. a dialogue on this, too. They are. I have been. Cool. No, I'm sending one. I could be at the work. Don, could I ask you a question real quick? Um, could you could you send me your mission statement and? Is he muted? Am I muted? No. Uh, no. Oh, Don, it, would you be willing to send us uh, your mission, the mission statement we just approved, and and the one that we were considering um, as a, a policy of the policy, or an in-house hmm. policy, or. Well, it was essentially the third sentence. Yeah, the right. third sentence. If you could send the third sentence to me as well. Don, you're muted. Oh, <laughs> oh, is, how did that happen? OK. okay. So, so what I'll do is I'll send that to, uh, I, I can go ahead and send that to everybody, but don't, if you have any comments, just send them. Remember, don't respond to all, just respond to me and we'll, we'll be cool and all that. Uh, okay, so the, uh, before we go forward on this one, um, we have 20, 20 minutes. Um, if we don't get to the street lighting today, Claudia, is that gonna be a disaster? I will not be heartbroken. Okay. I, well, I have you know, I have a couple of thoughts about what we're doing, and I'm still doing some research with an astronomer, and uh, we're doing some streetlight assessment, things like that. So uh, okay. it will be much more concise uh, at the next meeting. Okay, I think what we'll go ahead is go ahead and move that one to the next meeting, and then we won't feel like we've... Yeah, yeah, John, go ahead. So I have a suggestion. Yeah. The, the, the conundrum, oh, at least one area of conundrum under for this policy on, on uh, appointing people to vacancies is in, in one sense mathematical and coming to some agreement on a scheme for ranked choice voting that is clear and easily understood. Okay. And I don't think the, the eight of us here or eight of us are gonna do that collectively. <laughs> and so we can, unless, unless one of the eight people here has a, a, an elegant solution to that problem, we could spend another four hours reviewing options and talking about how it could work or not work. It's an important issue, I'm not suggesting, but I'm not sure that's the best use of our time during a meeting. I, I just... I think you, you make a very good point. I, I think what we can do is there are some minor changes to the wording which we can go over and, and at least get those out of the way. And if we could, and I think maybe we can agree on a format for presenting the, uh, the balance uh, in, in, the, in the rank choice issue. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to complete it. I don't think we're gonna have a completed uh, product today. Uh, as you say, uh, the, the rank choice thing becomes, it's really interesting and uh, we'll get into that in a moment. So uh, what I'd like to do, let me see, uh, I have for you all, mission, where is it? Here it is. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and put up on the screen the version uh, that we have with the uh, change. This is the one that I sent, I think this is the one, yeah. This is the one that I sent to uh, John and Gordon. So. It, Guys, it may not have everything that you all have in it. Uh, let me, I'm gonna share here. Uh, here it is. So again, I'll have to make it larger. Uh, now tell me when you can't, tell me when it gets big enough. That's good for me. Oh, okay, how keep, about Gordon? Keep, keep going. Bigger? Yes. Why can't this work? <clears throat> Hold on a minute here. It's just not doing it. Ah, here we are. Hold on. Oh, it's smaller. <laughs> oh, here. Uh, let's try this, shall we? That's where we were. It needs to be bigger, yeah? Yep. Okay. My next choice is double. Ah. Yep. 
Good. Awkward, but okay, let me get my comments here. There. Okay, so uh, let me introduce this a little bit. <laughs> this came up, this was at, uh, that we brought, uh, this came up during uh, my uh, liaison report at the board meeting. So I wanted to give you the feedback from that. Uh, if you all, uh, it's a very short section towards the end of the board meeting if you were to wish to uh, uh, take a look at it. Uh, the essence of it was <coughs> that they, uh, the section on appointing after, you know, during the year uh, immediately after an election, they, and they asked that that, they actually wanted to omit that. My, uh, right coming right before an election, especially when we know what the slate is, it would be, it, it, uh, it didn't appear to be appropriate. Uh, it, and it, it didn't seem like it was gonna be a productive discussion. Uh, and, and since this is something that I think a, a number of you really would like to, to have uh, passed, uh, and, and since I didn't think it had any chance of passing at this point in time, uh, I, I encouraged the board and they agreed to, to skip, to basically not deal with that first paragraph. What they wanted to do was simply delete uh, point 3.1 point and renumber everything else. I propose that we keep the number and just keep it as reserved. And both as a, as a reminder to those of us who will still be doing this next year or the year after, that we really wanna put back in this paragraph, which is now missing, that is the vacancy within the 12 months after an election. So that's the first change. Uh, the second change, mm, okay, uh, had to do with the uh, timing of public comment after the uh, applicants. Basically, the original wording that we had was uh, members of the public in attendance may address the board only during public comment section of the agenda. That didn't work because special meetings, which this is, which we've said this is going to be a special meeting, uh, does not have a public comment period. So then the issue became, well, when can the public talk? And, and so this is only my suggestion, is that the public, that we do need to allow the public to weigh in. And my suggestion is that the public weigh in after the board the, the, has already heard and interviewed all the candidates give the public a chance to give to provide their opinion. We're not giving the public a chance to ask questions or, or trap uh, a, a candidate, but we do the, as a board, as a, I would as a board member, I certainly wanna hear what the public had to say about the, you know, if they applicants that they particularly liked or didn't like. So that would be my recommendation uh, to simply include that sentence as uh, the red as I've indicated there. But that's kind of up to you if you, if you don't think that's appropriate, uh, that would be fine. That's just my suggestion. And then the other one down here, and this is a, um, oh boy, I can't spell delete either. Um, <laughs> the idea is we can't have secret ballots. Uh, you know, and, and Carmel immediately said, no, no, but we can have ballots. It's just that the ballots will have to be published. You know, so, so that how a director votes will be known to the public. It's, it, but so my question is, uh, I think open here is what uh, John suggested. Uh, I'm wondering whether we just leave that, just say designate by ballot and, and leave it at that. But we could say open ballot. So that those would be my suggestions. So that's the easy part. May I suggest we deal with these changes first and then uh, commence a, a, a brief discussion about the the rather larger problem of how to deal with this ranked choice. Oh, and the last thing before I shut up and, and I see Leslie has hand, uh, is that the board asked for <clears throat> in the final, our final product on this, what they'd really like to see is a checklist that they can just go down and say, you do A and then you do B and then you do C, oh, and if, and if something, then you go and you do X, otherwise you do Y, some kind of checklist with the steps laid out. Uh, uh, and since this is this is not um, this is not bylaws, so it can be policy, and in this case, procedure. And procedure can be wordy; it can be as wordy as it needs to be to be clear. So I wouldn't be at all. Uh, you should not be afraid about including examples, and uh, and creating like a. You may have the narrative and a checklist even, 
There are a number of ways to go. I think the issue from the board's point of view is clarity, that everything needs to be absolutely crystal clear so that there's no negotiation at that point in time when they're actually having to do this difficult job. We don't want them to have to be negotiating the process. Uh, okay, so that's, that's Don having had his say. Uh, Leslie, I, I see your hand. Don, there's some pretty big changes here. Is there any way that we could go ahead and table this till next meeting since there's so much work that has to be done on this? To make changes right now on these changes you have shown here from the board's direction, I think we need to, to hash out what you have already done so far. And also we've got the uh, rank file issue as well. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done here. So I just, I think we should save time. And, I, and if you could email us this document that you are showing us on the screen right now, plus the, yeah. the statement that you just made, that would really help as well. So can we do that? Uh, a motion to table is certainly in order. I mean, you, you all can do that anytime. So yeah. that's one thing. <laughs> do you wish to make such a motion? I would like to make a motion to table this because we just don't have enough information here to go ahead and make a clear decision. So, and I think Mr. Nix is correct. We're going to spend hours going over this in detail like this. I think we need to, to sit back and uh, review this individually and with the group and come back next month. Okay. Uh, I, have a, I have a comment. I, I do see your comment. Uh, do you want to comment before we make the motion or after the motion is made? I'll, I'll let you choose. <laughs> go ahead, Crosby. Oh, I, am I on? I, yeah, you're okay. on. Okay, no, I, on, I just had two quick comments. One, on the weather, the open ballot or secret ballot or whatever, a number of uh, agencies and government agencies and so forth in California use the ranked choice uh, voting process. They must have a way of handling the ballots that meets the requirements of the Brown Act. So we don't have to invent a new system here. We just need to find out how it's done in California. Okay. Good point. Then, Thank you. Yeah. The, the other main thing on, on the actual rank choice voting process itself, it, it is difficult to work out the wording, I agree. But the main problem that that I have found looking into this is that as you're going through the process and eliminating the lowest scoring person, if you have a tie about who to limit who to eliminate, there wasn't a good process for doing that. And I found running a couple of examples that if, if to uh, eliminate a person, if there's a tie of who has the least first place ranks, if you use the just the total sum of all of their initial rankings, like, like Don had did on one of his examples, you just add up going across first place, second place, fourth, whatever, just add it up going across and you use that as the tiebreaker of who to eliminate. In other words, the person with the, the lowest ranking in their original uh, director order is the one that's eliminated. And that, that seems to work okay. So I don't see any reason why this ranked choice voting thing can't work with that uh, particular uh, An example of embellishment. Okay, uh, thank you, Crosby. Uh, yeah, Ted. Oh, well, wait a minute. Uh, there is a motion on the floor, uh, but it hasn't been seconded yet. I'm, and I'm just gonna second. order. Say no, second. Uh, who seconded? Okay, Gordon seconded. So now we have a motion on the floor. So go ahead, Ted. Oh, you're muted. Uh, okay. All I was going to say is uh, it, with uh, five members on the board, is it is a tie? I mean, how, how does a tie work? Remember, this is a, this is doing a vacancy, so there won't be five. It'll be four. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> uh, yes. Never mind. Okay. So, so the motion is to uh, table. Basically, it's a motion to table indefinitely at this point. Uh, if that someone would like to make a, a table to a particular time, otherwise we can leave it as is. I just point that out. Uh, you got, you got Claudia. Um. Okay, so the one the, the one change you want to make is right uh, this thing about an open ballot. And what was the other change you had? Uh, the other one was just after all applicants had been interviewed. Um, yes. Are there are there issues with those uh, little changes that we couldn't incorporate those today and then table it and then table it and then uh, well yes. not table it but then uh, yeah yeah it's it's yes okay, okay. so. Um, 
uh, what I'm hearing is a possible amendment or uh, perhaps would you like, Leslie, if you'd like to withdraw your motion, we could deal with uh, Claudia's first and then do the tabling. Okay. Uh, I, I think there's a motion on the table. We act on that motion. Yeah, we'll have yeah. To, yeah we have to unless the, the mover withdraws the motion. Um, so. I want to table this because I, there's other issues involved here that needs to be addressed besides like the reserved 4150.311. So, or yeah. Claudia, you can the table to the next meeting. Call for the question. Oh, to the next meeting. All right. The question has been called. Uh, okay. So, we're going to first we have to vote on all those in favor of voting on the question. Please raise your hands. It, we're, we're voting on whether to vote right now. I see one, two, three. Wait a okay. So, okay, uh, four. So the previous question has been called, uh, moved, and uh, that, that motion passes. So we're back to the uh, voting on the uh, motion to, and I think it had been amended uh, kind of informally to say table until our next meeting. Is that, am I correct on that? Yes. Okay, the motion is to table this discussion until our next meeting. Uh, so at this point, and the previous question has been called, so there's no further discussion. Uh, those in favor, please raise your hands. Uh, I see one, two, three, four. Uh, motion, and I see, and those voting no, please raise your hands. I thought, okay, so uh, motion passes four to uh, one with uh, Claudia dissenting. Uh, Robert's rules requires that you always record the, the dissenting votes. They, the dissenters get to be get to be named. The idea being that dissent is extremely important and should never be uh, just simply walked over. Well, I'll, I'll name everybody, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we've actually, we've completed uh, our, uh, other than the, uh, which we've already agreed to uh, move on to the next. So I, I want to, we're going to, in our last five minutes, talk about future agendas. Let me bring the uh, tentative future agendas up. Can you all see that? Do I need to make it bigger? Not yet. It's all right. So far, it's the same one. Let me get rid of this one here first. There. Yeah. So you're only. So this is what I'm showing you now. <laughs> I think we're probably going to need to make that bigger. Oh, we can't see it. All we see is the oh, previous policy. Oh, oh, whoops. Yeah, you'll have to close that. I have to reshare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to close that one. I, okay. Now we start over. Thank you. Duh. There we go. This is our guy. Is this it? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we got it. Sorry about that. Uh, and let's see if I can't make that one larger. Let's go to 200. Okay. Um, I'm going to just, all we need to do here is look and see what we're, this was today, the, the first one here. So moving down to next month. So we're gonna, we need to add, all right. So we've got the um, replacements, uh, replacing BOD vacancies. And we also have the street lighting. Uh, I'm just gonna put street lighting here. Um. Um, John, yeah, can you put um, outdoor lighting instead of street lighting? Oh, good point. Thank you. Yeah, outdoor. Okay, outdoor lighting. So that now that's way too much for. So what can we take off? Um, I'm thinking. May I suggest email management is a huge one, and that's going to take a considerable amount of my time. So why don't we push that one down the road a little? Um, I'm going to get rid of, move that one down to the next meeting. And what else can we get rid of here? Uh, can we move the homeless one down too? Because I, I kind of have a feeling that that's going to go on a bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So if I move that one. But I will keep we will keep working on it. Oh yeah, please keep working on it. The homeless people aren't going away. So. Oh no. no. <laughs> In fact, they're gonna be more. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 
I say, there yeah. for the grace of God go the rest of us. Though. You know, to, okay. do, you want, do you want to fix the typo, Don, or just when, uh, later? Which typo? The outdoors, Miss misspelled. Oh, duh. Oh, our doors, yes, indeed. Okay, so we've got our nice meeting for next month. Now let's look at the next one here. Uh, so um, this is, let's see, okay, so this is November. So again, now for November, we've got too much on our plate. So again, uh, I'm going to wait for you guys now. What do you want to postpone until December? Outdoor lighting, that street lighting? Completely different. This thing you go on your patio door? Because, yeah, we don't. We only have our south north of street line on Main Street for CCSD. I know. Yeah. I'm going to move. I'm going to move surveillance. That was mine anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe. I mean, I think it's an important issue for sure, but I would move that one. Yeah. Let's you see. You can postpone my 20 gallon trash can, but I don't think it's on there. <laughs> so. Where'd it go? Oh, here. Oh, it's, well, that's, it's already, the, that's already the, up. Kitty reports. That's up there. Here it is. I'm going to move that one then. You can move that one. To November. I just this is ending up in December. Unless you want to do a committee report in. Uh, if yeah. I get the information, I'll let you know. Okay, so I'm going to put it for for November. How's that? Let's give you some, let's get you two months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we've got rid of one thing. Uh, we need to get rid of at least one more. Let's see. I have a feeling this purchasing could go on and on. So um, purchasing is massive too, by the way. Huge! It's absolutely huge. Um, okay, I'm going to leave it up to you. Which which of the four do you are you do you think we realistically we won't be ready to talk about? Don't anybody speak at once. Oh, how about I just start through? Okay, in terms of the purchasing policy, we already agree that's a huge job and may not be ready. What about the conservation and ethics issues? Gordon, I think I'll be ready in, uh, to actually discuss and consider, I mean, vote on in uh, November, or maybe we need preliminary work on that one. Well, the board's never gonna agree to it anyway, so you can move that one. Okay, let's move that one down. That may end up being part of our policy on policies, actually. Yeah, that's right, okay. that's it. So let me put that one down here. All right, now have we got it down to a reasonable size? Let's see. <clears throat> and we're gonna be looking at the uh, uh, mail response thing after you have discussion with the board members. So right. I, don't, I don't know, I don't know how you wanna, you know, where that lands in terms of future yeah, I think we're okay. I mean, what it is really, I have to do some preliminary work. So I think in terms, I mean, we're looking quite a far into the future here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think for now, if you all are happy with this as a tentative plan, till I yeah. come up with more information, we can go with that. Yeah, yeah Leslie, yeah. Yeah, um, the huge difference between outdoor lighting and street lighting too, by the way. So the change from street lighting to outdoor lighting, uh, I'm confused by that. Because CCSD is only responsible for street lighting, correct? Well, they're also, they're also responsible for the lighting on the vet's hall and any of their properties or tanks or anything else that, uh, yeah. that the CCS. So you could put CCS, CCSD outdoor lighting or you can put CCSD yeah. outdoor and street lighting. You could make it yeah. outdoor and street lighting. CCSD outdoor street lighting, uh, just as a caution. I mean, that's because it could get misinterpreted that we're trying to deal with outdoor lighting on all uh, residential properties, everything else. It's pretty broad. So... Street light was quite specific, so I'm just concerned that well, street lighting is in pri on private property. So you know that, but 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 we pay uh, this we we rate payers we pay for all of the lighting that CCSD uses, and yeah. so we do need to. And the thing is, is that you know we're talking about an existing lighting code uh, that we just want to update. Uh, so it's not it's not it's not that contentious, but. Uh, do I just make it clear and say, uh, you know, CCSD outdoor and street lighting? Exactly. That's that's exactly what I was asking. Thank you. Okay, I'll make that change. But really, yeah, we these are more. Uh, let me see what happened to it here. That's right. And and Don, I will also say that when we come to that discussion, um, I, I I would speculate that 
for what it's worth, Claudia and I would have no disagreement on what is appropriate lighting in this community. <laughs> but the discussion, but the discussion I'm going to interject there is how does this committee receive its work? In other words, I, I think it's very appropriate if this committee believes that there should be um, amendment or change or, or revision to an existing policy, in this case, maybe lighting, then we don't develop a policy. We say to the board, we think, and we recommend to the board that the board authorize us to review that policy. Yes. I won't say any more, but that's the issue for me. Um, th this came up because um, Carlos Mendoza is in the process of hopefully soon um, putting in a, um, a demonstration light from Lumican in a street light that was knocked down. And it is a low lumen um, LED type light that is dark sky friendly. So we were trying to coordinate um, a, a, a policy, well, at least, at least a discussion about this and then have this brought before the CCSD board. Um, the Dark Sky Initiative group uh, wants to give a, a, a presentation after that light is installed and after the public can see that. Um, and then the other thing that happened is that uh, Pearson uh, recommended that we look into um, solar street lighting to reduce the, uh, the lighting uh, bill, which is quite large. So this came about because uh, both Carlos and at that time was the board president uh, was di were discussing how to reduce the, uh, the, the electrical load uh, on, uh, you know, for the CCSD. Right. It, it, my issue, Claudia, has nothing to do with the content of what you're saying. It has to do, right. it has to do with how we receive our direction for work. And we don't receive it from Carlos and, and we receive it from the board. That's all, I'm gonna say no more. Wait, 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 guys, this is good to, wait, wait, everybody, this is good discussion, but it could, it can be reserved to the next meeting because we're way beyond our, our time. Yeah. Uh, and, and when, when it comes up on the agenda or, or uh, there probably may be, uh, Claudia may be ready to give a, 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 a preliminary report, right. uh, so there will be option, an opportunity to right. discuss this. It's, I'm right. not trying to shut you down, but yeah. uh, uh, Leslie, if it's real short, because you're, we're already five minutes over, and I, I don't want to break my promise to you too much, too too deeply here, or you'll never right. trust me. So yeah, no, I, it's fine. I just the crosstalk. I was trying to get you to stop the crosstalk so we can finish the meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, Claudia, real quick. Real quick. How about if you just ask the the the, the board members, you know, if the, if it's okay for us to be discussing this. Uh, okay, not to worry. Uh, I, I think right now, don't worry about it, Claudia. I, you know, first of all, we don't know what they're going to come up with, uh, and I haven't done my lobbying yet, uh, so not to worry too much about it. Because at the very least, we can do as John suggests, which we can say, "Hey, board, you need a policy about we think in our we respectfully think that you need a policy, and we respectfully recommend." the following as a possibility which you might desire to consider or something <laughs> like that. I don't have that in my notes, but I, I got you. So. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm having too much fun here. Yeah, we, I've, got, I've got to prepare for the next session, which is a candidate forum where I'm, I'm, a, I'm wearing my Lions Club hat and I'm welcoming, welcoming them. So I've got to. Excellent, John. Yes. And everybody, if you didn't know, it's today at, uh, I've been told, what, six o'clock? Is that right? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Uh, and how do we get the link? Well, if you don't have it now, I'll send it to you in a couple of minutes. But it's two, <laughs> two streaming um, outlets. You, you can go to um, the, Lemon, the, the League of Women Voters in SLO, and they'll, they stream it. And so does... Um, slow Span. Thank you. Oh, slow Span. OK, cool. Yeah, we can all get to Slow Span. Everybody knows how to get there, right? Yeah. Slowspan.org. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little entertainment tonight. That would be yeah. cool. So, all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. I look forward to our next meeting. And uh, I think we've, uh, I'll have to review my notes and I'll review this meeting to make sure I got it all straight uh, as to, you know, but I think there are several. Uh, Ted and I are going to get together and Claudia. There's a bunch of things that, and there's a uh, homework that I need to do. 
Anyway, right. you're, all, you're all good. And I just want to make one, you know, please, uh, I know that you're all volunteering your time. You're giving of your own time and, and talent with no compensation, you know. And so please do not feel that, I mean, you don't need to apologize. If, if the work's not going as fast as others think or, or perhaps even as fast as you think it ought to, be kind to yourself or be kind to each other. Uh, we, in this case, we have all the time in the world and, and <laughs> we do not need any guilt or any, any uh, really, no guilt, please. <laughs> that way I can feel free to ask you stuff and if you can't get it, I know it's not gonna make you feel bad, mm -hmm. right? Okay. okay. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, it was a pleasure to see you all. So I'll just wave go, him goodbye. Go to, go to the Cookie Crock and see our new magazine kiosk. It's very oh, cute. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Here we go. <laughs>